Hello and welcome to Dove Biology, Apes Lessons to Go. I'm Mr. Dove, and today we'll be looking at mining and non-renewable mineral and fuel resources. Throughout your lifetime, you will consume approximately 3.7 million pounds of minerals, metals, and fuels in order to sustain your life and your lifestyle. The minerals that you use come from mineral resources, which are simply a concentration of these minerals that are occurring in or on the Earth's surface that can be extracted and processed into useful materials at an affordable cost. The United States has many mineral resources which are used to produce the products that you consume, but not everything can come from those mineral resources. As a result of differences in geologic activity around the world, we need to import minerals from elsewhere in order to produce our products um, and maintain our lifestyles. The mining and mineral industry is an important part of Virginia's economy. In 2007, Virginia's non-fuel raw mineral production was valued at $1.5 billion. Interestingly uh, to note, um, crushed stone was the most valuable uh, non-fuel mineral export. Now the rock which contains that mineral, usually a metal, um, that we're extracting is called an ore. Now the published estimates of how much of this ore that we have is called the reserve. Now reserves can increase under two conditions. One, either we find new sources of our desired mineral, and that's going to increase the amount of reserves that are available, or uh, technology improves such that we're able to extract that uh, the ore that's already present that was perhaps harder to access. Um, and so now it's accessible to us, and so we've added that to our reserve. The extraction process for minerals and metals um, is a, a process called mining. Um, there's several different methods we can use to mine those uh, resources from the earth. And they really differ in how much they cost, how safe they are to people, and how much they impact their environment. In general, we see two ways that we're going to be extracting minerals from the earth. We can use surface mining techniques uh, to remove shallow deposits, and then we'll use subsurface or underground mining methods to retrieve those minerals that are deep in the earth. One example of surface mining technique is an open pit mine. Here we use machines to dig large holes to remove our desired material. These holes can get very, very large. And as a result, a lot of water can accumulate in the bottom. And as the water enters into these big open pits, um, they can pull with them toxic materials that can, can accumulate and then leach into the groundwater. Another type of surface mining is area strip mining. Here, we use machinery to pull away strips of uh, earth that is covering up our desired ore. Those strips of earth is called overburden. Now, this overburden has to go somewhere, and so we usually put it into these big piles, which we call a spoils bank. These spoil banks are um, susceptible to the environment. Uh, wind and water can erode these spoils banks, uh, not only adding additional sediment to waterways, but potentially pulling toxic materials that were part of that overburden. Another kind of strip mining is called contour strip mining. This is going to be used on hilly or mountainous terrain. As we remove strips of earth, it uh, produces these high walls um, above where we are mining. Once again, just like those uh, spoils banks, the high wall is also highly erodible. And when it rains, it's going to pull with it sediment and potential toxins that then will enter into waterways, um, adding to that pollution. The final type of strip mining, that, or surface mining rather, that we'll be examining is mountaintop removal mining. Here we use machinery, 
or explosives to remove entire tops of mountains. This removal of so much sediment uh, is sending rocks and dirt down into the streams and waterways below, increasing the amount of uh, pollution, as well as destroying valuable habitat for organisms. Now, when a material is too deep uh, for us to extract using surface mining techniques, we'll begin to employ subsurface mining techniques. Here, we'll drill down perhaps miles under the earth to be able to extract that resource. Because we're drilling under the earth, we're actually disturbing about one-tenth of the land and producing much less waste than if we were using surface techniques. Unfortunately, we're going to retrieve a lot less resource because sometimes some of that resource is left in the supports that are holding up those tunnels. This process is very expensive and very dangerous to miners. It, uh, every year we hear about um, mines that collapse and trap or potentially kill miners that are underneath miles and miles of rock. As we've uh, explored a little bit, this process of mining causes lots of environmental damage from the amount, uh, enormous amounts of energy that it uses, the habitat destruction from removing all of that uh, surface uh, overburden, the soil erosion that can take place with the removal of vegetation and the production of the spoils banks, and then the air and water pollution that come from the mining process and that erosion. Additionally, we'll see things like acid mine drainage, where we get acid that leaches from mines as a result of interactions with leftover uh, tailings. For example, iron sulfide will react with the water um, that comes into the mine to produce sulfuric acid. When that acid gets into the waterway, not only is it going to reduce the pH affecting the organisms there, it can cause the leaching of heavy metals, which increases fish deaths, which can further disrupt um, an ecosystem. We see acid mine drainage not only from uh, new mines, but also from mines created thousands of years ago by the Romans in Great Britain. Now, once we've removed that ore from the earth, our potential environmental damage doesn't stop there. The ore usually contains two components, our desired material and then waste material, which we call gang. When we remove the metal from the gang, we uh, end up with something called tailings, some leftovers. Oftentimes, these tailings contain toxic metals, which can then blow away or uh, leach into the groundwater, which is going to contaminate that source. After we've taken the gang uh, away, we've got to remove the metal from the ore. There are two ways to do that. We can either uh, use a process called smelting or use solvents. When we smelt the ore, we heat it up. And that heating is going to allow for us to separate the metal from the ore. That heating process can produce large amounts of air pollution and water pollution. Sometimes solvents can be used to separate the metal from the ore. For example, gold can be removed by using cyanide. Cyanide is a very toxic chemical. Uh, using it inappropriately uh, can not only produce pollutants, but also leave a lot of leftover toxic waste. There are a lot of laws that regulate mining. The primary federal law that regulates coal mining in the United States is the Surface Mining Control and Reclamation Act of 1977. Uh, this law created two programs. One, which regulates the active coal mine, making sure that it's safe for the individuals and not being overly damaging to the environment. The second component is going to allow for the reclamation of those abandoned mines to make them safe and reusable by humans and by the wildlife. Half of the fees that are uh, re received from the taxes on coal are used for reclamation. The other half are used by the Office of Surf Surface Mining to respond to emergencies such as landslides, uh, land subsidence, that's when the land kind of caves in, any kind of uh, mine fires, or any major cleanups that need to take place as a result of pollutants and things coming from the mine. 
As we extract and use resources, we must remember that they're non-renewable and their future supply really depends on their initial abundance and how rapidly we use that material. While we may never truly run out of any mineral, it may become a point uh, which it costs so much more to extract than it's worth um, that we say that it's economically depleted. This occurs when about 80% of the material has been extracted from the earth. Now the time it takes to reach that depletion point really depends on the cost of the material and how efficiently it's being used. If we simply mine, use, and then throw away and don't find any new sources of material, um, the depletion time will be reached very quickly. But if we use an object, uh, use that material efficiently, um, and look for new, uh, re new sources, we're going to then be able to extend the time it takes uh, to reach that depletion point. A couple ways uh, to increase the efficiency of material use um, is find substitute materials, uh, like substitutes for metal, for example, or substitutes for concrete. Uh, plastics have done a really good job of replacing a lot of metals these days. Uh, new composite materials like grandcrete is potentially going to be replacing concrete as we move into the future and have uh, a lot of different countries building infrastructure. Uh, grandcrete is like a foam material that's then sprayed with a, uh, a hard resin uh, to create a building material. When we recycle and reuse materials, um, not only are we saving money and lowering our environmental impact, we're also increasing the time uh, to that economic depletion point because we're using material that's already been extracted. Our final big thing that might help with uh, using our resources is if industries begin to mimic nature by recycling and reusing their minerals and their chemicals, or by creating resource exchanges where waste from one manufacturer becomes the raw materials for another, uh, creating uh, something similar to food webs in nature. Um, one company that's kind of uh, at the forefront of this is the Subaru Manufacturing uh, Company. And they, as they build cars, um, some of their facilities are considered zero waste facilities um, because they're doing just that using resource exchanges and waste from one place is raw materials for another. As humans, we extract and utilize a vast amount of material from the earth. Learning how to more efficiently extract and utilize them will allow us to be more sustainable into the future.